Hello and welcome to my playthrough of the Jonathan Colton Adventures. If you want to just see me play the game, uh, I suggest you jump the first episode because this is just the intro and how the game got started. So first off, who is Jonathan Colton? Which is what Joko stands for. You may be aware of him from the Portal games where he wrote the songs at the end called Still Alive and Want You Gone. Uh, you may have also heard of his song Code Monkey, with Mandelbrot Set, Skullcrusher Mountain, or many, many other songs. You may have seen him on Brain Dead, where he wrote the summary songs at the beginning of each episode that summarised the previous episode. Uh, or you may have seen his interludes on The Good Fight. Uh, and you may have even been on his cruise, his geek cruise, that happens every year. Um, or you may have even discovered him way back in 2005 when he was writing a song every week. Before that, he was a code monkey. Uh, well, so that's who John the Golden is. But how do I know him? Well, back in 2005, he asked his fans if anyone could help him with his website because although he was a code monkey, he wanted to concentrate more on music. Uh, so I offered to do that and I wrote some. I learned PHP to write some code for him, and uh, and learned WordPress as well. Uh, though none of the, my stuff is still there; it's all been replaced. Um, and I got to know him a little bit that way. And then I offered to try and organise a UK tour for him because he's American, and I live in the UK. Uh, and I wasn't very good at that, and I failed to actually organise a UK tour for him. But I did try very hard. Uh, but luckily, when he wrote Still Alive for the Portal, the BBC uh, paid to fly him out to interview him, and while he was over here, he did a concert that was so popular, standing room only, that he decided to come back later that year for a proper UK tour. And when he did that, he needed someone to send his merchandise to. So he, I offered to be the place he sent it to, he sent it to me, and then I went to all of his concerts and took the merchandise to him. Uh, I also helped him out a little bit while he was on his UK tour. Uh, so uh, after that I knew him quite well, he knew me quite well. Um, and at around this time he was still writing his songs every week and uh, he said his songs were released under Creative Commons which means you can use uh, the specific version of Creative Commons was you can use it if you don't make any money off of it however you want. Uh, and he was encouraging people to make music videos for his songs. Well, no one really had been, and I thought, well, I can do that. So he had this song called Flickr, where he took a load of pictures off of Flickr, almost at random, it appeared. I don't actually know how he did it, but it looked fairly at random. And then he wrote a song about these random images. And, and he was, that was displayed in the video. Uh, and I thought, oh, well, I can use this style to make videos for his other songs. So. I took his songs, uh, and I found images on Flickr, and then I displayed them on screen, and I released videos. And chances are that where you're seeing this video, if you go back through my history, there are all the videos I did. Uh, I did about ten that way, plus I did two live action ones, uh, one for Code Monkey and two for, uh, for Mr. Fancy Pants, which is a bit of a weird song, um, and some other, and that, that video series became quite popular and some other people uh, let me display their videos on my on my uh, video podcast uh, some of which were even better than mine by a long way um, at, at which point uh, I realized that other people were making videos now and they were making better videos than me so I thought okay well let's move on from this what else can I do well I'm a programmer and uh, and I love adventure games, uh, I specifically love the Monkey Island series of adventure games, and I thought, well, let's do one of those. Uh, I, I can make an adventure game, it's easy. Um, <laughs> it's it's not easy, but it, it, I, I'm fairly happy with the way it turned out. I definitely would have done many things differently, um, but I'll go into that as I play the game. Um, and that's basically uh, how we got to me writing a, a graphic adventure game for, for a Jonathan Colton song. So I decided to make this adventure game, uh, and it, I spent five years making this adventure game, uh, and 
the first thing I had to do was I had to find a, rather than write all from scratch, I had to find a way of making this game quickly and easily. And so I went out on the internet to find all these tools for making a graphical adventure games and I had certain criteria. I needed it to be a talkie, I wanted it to the audio to actually be spoken to you so you didn't have to read it uh, and this was exceptionally important because uh, because obviously it's based on a, mu on a song I needed that song to be able to be played uh, and then that's so I only actually found one tool that met that criteria uh, I also ideally I wanted it to be able to be playable on phones alas I had to give up on that because the only tool I found was a tool called Lassie Shepherd which you can see on screen um, it's very good but uh, it's flash based and that is one of the reasons why I'm making this video now flash is being disabled at in about a month's time <laughs> uh, so I, I need to make this video now or the game is gone forever uh, so I found the tool and I learned how to use it uh, I was quite happy with it it was a little bit buggy in places but I was in good communication with the developer he wasn't really developing it anymore but he gave me all the pointers I need to avoid uh, basically a bug that would have caused the entire game to have got lost <laughs> if I did certain things um, it was a very good tool I was very happy with it uh, it's like everything it's not perfect but it was it did what I needed and it did very well uh, so found the tool did everything I needed to do so I made a website and said I'm making this game if anyone wants to help contact me and over the five years that that website was up while the game was being made I had lots of people contact me probably about 20 uh, probably just over 10 of those uh, I can't remember exactly I'll see when I get to the credits at the end of the game uh, actually did help me on the game uh, most of those people just did the voices there was a, f a small number of people that actually helped me write the game uh, there was one person that wrote some dialogue for one of the scenes and he was he was a professional dialogue writer and did a very good job I was very happy with that and it was a shame that he couldn't spend any more time helping me uh, because that would have made the dialogue I think a lot better I mean again I'm quite happy with the dialogue but doesn't mean it couldn't be better um, once the game was ready to be tested I sent it out to various people to test mostly my friends uh, and they gave me feedback which was mostly I'm stuck I can't get out of the first room uh, but I'll come into that again later uh, uh, and the only other thing I need to mention at this point is the graphics so everything else everything that anybody did on the game that helped me apart from one thing they all did for free they didn't get paid any money no money was made from this game but the graphics you can't get I just couldn't find someone to make the graphics for me for free. I worked for a games company and I spoke to the, some of the graphics people there and they said they would do it but it would cost a reason, quite a lot of money uh, and then I also got a quote from a guy called Len Peralta uh, I think that's, I think that's his surname, Len Peralta uh, he was associated with Jonathan's music already, he was making uh, a piece of art for all of the songs that Jonathan was making when he was releasing a song a week um, and he also did a lot of artwork for his t-shirts for, for Jonathan Colwell so he was already associated with Jonathan so I got him to do a quote and his quote was still a lot but not as much uh, now the two people were very different art styles so Lend was more certainly fitted in more with Flash style where uh, sort of I would guess you'd call it cell animation style like not highly detailed and then the other guy would be more of a monkey island type like a uh, pixel art um, which is obviously takes more time which is why he was going to charge more um, I couldn't figure out how I was going to pay for this I, I could have paid for it out of my own pocket and I was seriously considering that uh, but I didn't really want to be losing money on this it was it was a labor of love um, but I didn't really want to be it, cost me money so I spoke to Jonathan uh, and I said is there any way I, I can charge for this and this be okay with you because I can obviously uh, I mean I'd agreed with Jonathan I was going to do this uh, but I, the original plan was I wasn't going to make any money and so I wouldn't have to go through any agreement with Jonathan although we had come to an agreement that that would be fine and he was more than happy for me to do it uh, but when I 
said, can I charge for this? He said, well, that makes things really complicated from a legal point of view. Uh, it's probably best if you don't. Um, and Jonathan basically said, I'll pay for the graphics. And so Jonathan Colton paid for the art in this computer game. And had he not done that, it may have been very likely that I probably wouldn't have finished this game. But obviously once Jonathan paid up all this money, I pretty much had to finish this game. Uh, and I'm glad I did. Uh, I th I'm, I'm quite happy with the game. As I say, it's not perfect. Um, so Jonathan forked out from his own pocket to, for this game. Uh, and I am very grateful to him for that. Okay, now it's time to start the game.